Well, making his Christmas Clatter debut is the one and only Ed Bailey. He has a book aptly titled The Christmas Book, and you know, I was thinking he's probably the only person I could think of to follow up Zuzu Bailey herself on the podcast, but uh, uh, Ed has this wonderful, wonderful book. It covers all things Christmas. He calls it the ultimate guide for your favorite holiday. Ed, thanks so much for hopping on Christmas Clatter with me. Oh, thanks so much for having me on. Um, no, no pressure. I, I actually have some pedals in my uh, to to ha- give you to put in your pocket, you know, <laughs> to follow up with Zuzu. But yeah, I was, I was listening to uh, the Zuzu podcast this morning, and I was thinking, man, I, how do I top being on the set with Jimmy Stewart for the, uh, you know, the ultimate Christmas movie? Uh, when I've, I, you know, I just write a little bit about that that movie but it's uh it's a lot of pressure following like a, a living legend yeah i mean it's uh yeah it's kind of like uh you know what do you do you just kind of you just give it the best swing you can that that was something that just kind of fell in my lap and it's like it just made it work it's like you know, i'll do what i i'll do what i can to make it happen and uh and it, and it, it went off uh, she, wonderfully so she sounded great Oh yeah, she was sharp as a tack. I was hoping to get her on video, but her computer was acting up. And where, uh, where was she coming from at that point? Uh, state of Washington, somewhere in the state of Washington. Yeah, but the way she was talking about, it, she's she's on the move constantly. I mean, yeah, it was, she, it was impressive. She's yeah, she's on tour and stuff, and so we tried to get her, you know, on video, but her computer's acting up. And I said, let's just do phone call. That's better than than rescheduling right. or anything, and because she was getting so busy, but. Ed, you have a just a wonderful book here, the Christmas book. I, I I have a copy of it. I went and bought bought the copy after you let me know it was out there because I was just intrigued. And it's just, man, you packed a lot in this book. You cover everything from the movies to the music to the TV to the books to the different versions of uh, Christmas carols. To I'm sure I'm forgetting categories off the top of my head. It's like. What what put it in you to cover so much in one book? And I, I mean, I love it. It's great. I love it, but it's that's a lot. I mean, I think I think the um, the the one common theme to it is is kind of the same reason you're doing this podcast. It's it's clearly a, a love of the holiday itself. Yeah. But um, starting out with the idea, okay, let me let me write about. Let me write about Christmas. Let me write about, let me find some aspect that would be interesting. And then one question or one answer led to another question. And I started thinking, well, if I'm, if I'm talking about um, TV specials and Rankin Bass and well, what about, you know, an episode of ER that deals with Christmas, they had tons of them. And, and what about, um, you know, there's so many Christmas Carol ap- adaptations. What what are the best ones? What you know, what are some questionable ones? And it just and then it's like, well, if I'm covering this, why don't I go through? I I, I didn't know the reason behind why we eat gingerbread and why we why we have trees in our homes. I mean, I vaguely had heard certain things, and you vaguely hear about. I obviously, you know, I know about um, the nativity. Uh, aspect of it, but I didn't really know Saturnalia and how that factored in. And one thing led to another. I just kept asking myself questions. And, you know, then it started being like, well, if I've covered this, I've covered food. Well, what about fashion? What What's with the ugly sweaters? And where, yeah. where do they come from? And how did they become popular? And just one question led to another. And uh, I attempted to answer them as, as it was almost like um, just my own personal questions, answering them and then trying to organize it in a, in a way that would be as if I was sitting next to somebody at a bar or a coffee shop. And they said, well, what, what's the deal with, uh, mistletoe? Why do we, why do we kiss under the mistletoe? And I try to give it a, a, a quick, uh, brief summary of what it is or, you know, what, how come a Christmas Carol, I mean, how come, uh, it's a wonderful life was suddenly on every TV channel in the seventies. What, what was that? And giving an explanation to the people who don't know about the license issues and how, how it exploded that way. And um, it was, it was cool. It was a fun endeavor, but it was um, just when I think I've covered 
this aspect. Then I find out about a new movie from the the thirties that I didn't know about and yeah. going back, but you know, the beauty of the internet, you can, you can find everything pretty yeah. much. Yeah. You can keep digging. Now, how did you tackle it? Did you tackle like all the music at one time or was it just kind of, as it came up, you know, you, you think of a song, you'd write it down, you tackle that song, you think of a movie, you write it down, you think of a tradition and then you just compile it all at the end or. So, I mean, it was, it was a very, um, it started off as structured as I could get. It was Excel with tabs and I had, okay, these are all of the songs I can think of. And uh -huh. these are all the songs in my, in my phone right now of all the right. Christmas songs that I have in my collection. So clearly I got to cover those. And then I started doing uh, searches about, Hey, what are some uh, un underrated Christmas songs? Or what are some modern songs? And then you can Google, well, uh, you know, I have a bunch of versions of, white christmas on my phone and then you can google and find out well here are the 300 versions of it and right. scanning through that and like do i know this am i familiar with this and just systematically going through them and writing down my thoughts and then obviously cutting out what you know just trying to put the the things that are the most or least interesting and cutting them out or adding them um and i did the same thing with movies and and uh and television episodes specials ranked bass you know off the top of my head i could think of i don't know 14 of them right and then i you know there's 21 i think or 22 yeah and so the internet you know you can find all of that and then um but it was it it started very organized but like i sat down when i said all right i'm gonna write this i had a spreadsheet and it was like okay this is the song page and i just went through it you know a few weeks of just songs um but to consume all of the media that i hadn't seen you know an episode of swat from the 70s that had a christmas episode <laughs> like when i was exercising i just put that on in the background i just constantly I, I all i consumed for several months was was christmas stuff like there's i watched some college basketball when it when i took a break from christmas and then that was it for like the spring uh pretty much uh, february to the end of may i was just consuming nothing but christmas oh and and no, you know no, you get to the end of it i mean yeah. you get to the end of it and then it's like all right now how do i take all this and put it into one clean thing right right i just imagined you in one of them like conspiracy theory cork boards and dry erase boards with the <laughs> yeah, arrows and the strings and the, <laughs> yeah just kind of yeah my garage <laughs> looks like the inside of it's a beautiful uh, the, a beautiful mind right? yeah just something like that you're like <laughs> yeah you come up with some conspiracy I mean, it wasn't that but it wasn't not that also <laughs> yeah. like it, it got a little nuts towards <laughs> towards the end my brain oh, was man. just leaking christmas episodes of yeah. random shows i've never seen yeah you're just walking up to your friends and family and just being like hey this is what i learned today and they just kind of like oh boy is that yeah i mean i did go up to one of my buddies i think uh I think we we met um, we met for a drink in like May, and I was like, I just saw the craziest episode of you know Quincy uh, or you know something or Trapper John MD a Christmas episode. <laughs> He's like, Are you insane? What? It's it's May fourteenth. Why are you watching a Christmas episode of a show from nineteen eighty? <laughs> oh man. Did you? I got to ask you this, and uh, okay. I, you know, I didn't read every word of the book, but did you get to see the new the uh, uh, New Heart episode, uh, Christmas episode oh. from the Bob Newhart show? Not the one where oh. he, the innkeeper Bob Newhart. No, wait. Are you saying the the show Newhart or the Bob? Newhart? Yeah, Newhart, Newhart, not the Newhart. Oh yeah, yeah with the with the uh, the the no room at the inn and yes, all that. Yes. It was, Oh, what a man. wonderful episode. That's, that's one of my favorite Christmas episodes of all time. I just yeah, love that's that thing. that's a terrific one. Um, yeah. But he really, I mean, he he nailed it with with a bunch of his uh, 70s show where he was the uh, psychiatrist. Mm -hmm. He had some great Christmas episodes. But yeah, that that new new heart episode was was terrific. Yeah, it is. A, it's just absolutely wonderful. It's a it's a watch several times around here at Christmas time kind of episode. Oh, yeah. And, and, and it's really good um uh, i just the thing that really i love about uh your book and 
and and I, I'm assuming we're probably close to the same age. And some of the younger listeners might not remember these things, but there used to be these things called um, encyclopedias, what you had to go to to find things. <laughs> and yeah, and I would, reports. Yes, and you would go like to the bookstore, and you'd go back there. I was I was kind of, I, I was a nerd, comic book nerd, growing up, and I'd go back there and I'd find like the Marvel encyclopedia. And I'd just sit back there for like an hour when my mom shopped through the mall and just like thumb through it because it had a little something about like every character and every planet and, you know, and just, um, just sitting there and just, you know, ate it all up because you, you know, you could dive through it and, and stuff. And that's the, really the feel and the vibe I got from your book. It was like, oh, there's just a little something about everything about this, you know, thing I love, which is Christmas. And it just really brought that kind of nostalgia back to me of, being back in the back of the bookstore looking through those uh, encyclopedias like that. And I appreciate uh, that. that. That's that's so good to hear because I, I can definitely remember um, the same type of thing with it with a Star Wars, some sort of all encompassing guide to Star Wars and reading mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, Chewbacca's extended family and all mm -hmm. of those things, but diving in. And yeah, I was I was trying to I, I mean, the name of the game is is Nostalgia. With mm -hmm. the, there's a reason why um, songs that were written 75 years ago are still popular today. It's yeah, they they all hit a certain part of our brain that uh, you know that's nostalgia, and it brings you back to uh, Christmas when you were eight years old and 12 years old. And um, I just tried to embrace that and 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 really um, just point out the things that maybe we missed over the years, or, the, or enhance the things we already know um mm -hmm. you know maybe a backstory about how how rudolph uh made it to air and it involved the uh, general electric light bulbs and there's there's things that we always you know we we all know rudolph but like how that story came to be is you know as part of it or how the the book was first written and what was the reason behind that and so some of these stories are more well known than others but i tried to dive into just everything and embrace um the fact that Christmas is is different to everybody. I mean, there are certain common themes, but people yeah. embrace. They really there are people who are fanatics. I, I, I would say from listening to all the different podcasts about about um, movies. I mean, I, I, I didn't realize how polarizing a Christmas story is. And that's like yeah. kind of a lover love or hate thing. But there are mm -hmm. there are a ton of things that people really this is their go to song. This is their go to movie. This is the the go-to Christmas special. And when I was a kid, the Rankin's Bass special that meant the most to me, and I, I don't really know why, was Twas the Night Before Christmas with the, the mice. And yep. it was, I guess, because my grandparents bought me a record, where just the audio track of it. So I used to listen to that. So I knew when each thing was coming. And so I don't think I knew anybody that that was their number one special when they were a kid. But that was mine because so everybody has one aspect of of the holiday that they um, that they latch on to a little more than others. And I, I tried to include all of that. So there's something for everybody who loves Christmas in this book. Oh, yeah. You, you know, you're right. It's the nostalgia plays such a big role. And and, you know, Christmas story is one of those, like you said, that people are hot or cold on. And it kind of just depends, you know, and, and like you said, everybody has that one special or that one song and i didn't realize till i started really diving in into this community head first it's like one of the big traditions for for people is the you know like the first christmas song that they listen to of the season there's lots of people that have one song they have to listen to first and hmm. uh, and i thought i thought i was like the only person like that, <laughs> that for a long time you know it's like yeah, it's like i just have to listen to this first this is the first thing no, no matter what and, it just doesn't to, seem right without it, you know, so. Yeah, that's cool. For me, I don't know if I, I necessarily have a song that I have to hear first, but for me, I watch, you know, to when when the the season officially kicks off at mm -hmm. Thanksgiving and I buy I buy a live tree for for our home the day after the first thing I watch then is always It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah. So to me and and many people they that's like their their Christmas Eve tradition or maybe you know you do both but for me like yeah. that's the one that really sets the tone for me that's that's I mean if you come out of that movie not feeling like 
inspired to to be good and and just the whole reason for the season that's that's the movie for me it sets the tone for the whole season for me oh it, it sure it sure does and yeah i have you know since i do you know christmas talk year, year round i have songs and movies that i do not you know watch or listen to until the tree is up just to keep them in, you know i guess in, for lack of a better word in a, in a sacred place because i, I don't i don't want to tire of them you know so it's like I, I i i wait till the house is decorated to put them up and i i find alternatives in, in there and one thing i want to get to that uh, is in your book that uh, i, I want to hear your opinion on because it is a uh, you know, for those that, you know, hear and talk about the Christmas movies a lot, there is a, uh, a one thing that is, is it a Christmas movie or is it a movie set at Christmas or as you worded it, is it Christmas adjacent? Yeah, and, uh, I have lots of those. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I just want to get your take on that, you know, because, um, you know, certain people have criteria on what is a Christmas movie and what, what isn't. And uh, so just how, how did, how were you able to pair a Christmas movie from a movie that was Christmas adjacent. So a big part of it, a big part of it, I think is the conclusion to me, to me, I, obviously this is all from my perspective mm -hmm. to me, it's got to end at Christmas or it has to, there has to be the, the kind of the, the culmination of the movie has to end at Christmas. So uh, I'm trying to think of a movie like, um, uh, while you were sleeping, mm -hmm. that's the Sandra Bullock. The guy falls on the train tracks and he's in a coma. Yeah. And there's the so a lot of it takes place at Christmas and there's gift giving and there's a lot of it hits a lot of the Christmas notes, mm -hmm. but it finishes up, I think, in the spring. Yeah. And it's not that there's a lot of Christmas music in it. It's 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 a a note to the story. Yeah. But to to me, it's. It's I don't know. It just doesn't hit it. And whereas, I mean, we, we've talked about it's a wonderful life to me. If you have hard and fast rules that it has to be filled with Christmas music or it has to only take place at Christmas time, that that movie doesn't hit. Right. But the conclusions at Christmas and it's about redemption and uh, generosity and it, it hits those Christmas notes. So it if you can define that as a Christmas movie, it's a, a broad definition, but for me, the conclusion yeah. at Christmas probably is the biggest thing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand that. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. There's a several podcasters I, I've uh, I'm friends with that don't buy it's a wonderful life as a Christmas movie because of the lack of Christmas in it. And my only argument to that is the whole movie takes place on Christmas day because the conversation between Clarence and, and, uh, Joseph uh, takes place from the time uh, George Bailey walks on that bridge to the time. That's he, right. You know, he's, he's, he's at the end of his rope yeah. on Christmas Eve and they got to save him on Christmas yeah. Eve. And then yeah. it's like, here's the backstory that what got yeah. us to Christmas Eve, but it always yeah. comes back to that. Yeah. People don't realize in real time that backstory took at most minutes, you know, to tell, you <laughs> that's know, right. so, um, you know, so yeah. that's what I always say. It's the whole movie's done on Christmas Day. You and the, the debate around uh, is it a Christmas movie or not usually uh, centers around Die Hard with like modern yeah. think pieces. And yeah. um, to me, that it entirely takes place at a Christmas party that goes awry. And it yeah. is about family getting together. It's a Christmas action movie to me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it it does feature songs, but it's it's, you know, just like. There are Christmas horror movies. This, this was a Christmas action movie to me. Yeah, yeah. But but a movie, you know, back to while you were sleeping, like Christmas is featured, but it's not about Christmas. Trading places. There's a big Christmas scene where Dan Aykroyd's dressed as Santa, but it the big part of the movie takes place on a train ride on New Year's Eve. It's not yeah. Christmas. So yeah, um, yeah. Th that's how I try to define it. But. I thought there were cool notes of movies that have Christmas touches that you never think of remotely as Christmas, the Godfather. Right. And so I try to just say, here are all the ones that there's a, it's Christmas adjacent. There's a, there's a Christmas aspect to a key scene or something to it. And yeah. that, that's, that's why I added that chapter. 
Yeah, yeah. I have a video on Die Hard coming out, and I don't want to say too much about it right now because I'm not sure if it'll release before or after this one does. But I, I, I'm trying to give like the definite answer, you know, if it's okay. a Christmas movie or not. And and when we when we hit um when I hit in record, I'll I'll I'll, I'll fill you in on it. But uh, <laughs> well, uh, right now all we're talking about is my take on it. So yeah, we're not, yeah, we're not spoiling your take. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh, yeah you know a lot of people look for like the linus moment or, or some people call it the grinch moment or scrooge moment you know where there's like that change of heart and, and things but I, I have a hard and fast rule on christmas movies and i know it's kind of silly because you end up gathering more movies in and under the umbrella of christmas movie than you should but I like it because then I don't take the time to analyze the movie to see if it is a Christmas movie or not. And that, and that rule is if it has anything Christmas in it, it's a Christmas movie. Okay. And, uh, and, uh, and I've stick with it. And then, like I said, I get some silliness like Jurassic world when it came out, you know, opened up on Christmas day or Christmas Eve, at least I can't remember. Okay. But that was the only, only christmas ever seen in the movie was at the opening scene you know so i count it I'm, so yeah and and that that's that's cool too i i um i put in my book and i i thought it was very interesting um the uh oh my god i'm drawing a blank on a whole section of my book that <laughs> the guy the guy who um shane black yep. the director who does uh so many movies the, the yeah. last boy scout the last yeah. action hero yeah. uh, iron man 3 and yeah. he in a in an article i thought it was pretty interesting he said christmas he wants a christmas oh lethal weapon is is yeah, probably that's good say. yeah so he he thinks christmas is such a perfect way um to really give some um uh, some some weight to whatever is going on in the movie because we mm-hmm. we take stock of where our lives are at that time yeah. And so he always likes to have Christmas as a backdrop. So Iron Man three was an Iron Man Christmas special, essentially. And um, and I, you know, I make the point with uh, Batman Returns. If that movie was called a, a very Batman Christmas, people wouldn't be like, well, that's not a Christmas movie. They, they just accept it as a Christmas movie because right. it's called Batman Christmas. But because it's called Batman Returns, some some people think, oh, it's not really a Christmas movie where the whole thing, I mean, he's kissing Catwoman under the mistletoe. It all takes right. place at Christmas time. It's, it's a Christmas movie. Yeah, it is. You know, you, you mentioned lethal weapon and, uh, I think lethal weapon would be remembered more as a Christmas movie. If the soundtrack had a little bit more Christmas in it, kind of like right. die hard did die hard had a lot more yes. Christmas, right. uh, backdrop in it. And because there are scenes in, in lethal weapon, you know, being in, in Southern California, well, Die, Die Hard was in Southern California too, but it was all basically one building. You know, there were, there was, you know, whole 20, 30 minute scenes in, in Die Hard where you forgot it was at, you know, Christmas time because right. there wasn't, you know, always something to remind you of it. But uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to, to hear. And I get a lot of, a lot of grief from uh, my friends about, about my rule, but, I'm sticking with it because it makes life easier for me. And, uh, and but I mean, that's to me, that's what makes um, Christmas great because, like I said, it's it, it, what from all of the research and reading about, you know, writing yeah. about Christmas around the world, it means so many different things to right. different people that it's like everybody can have the rule and it's, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. yeah. But, Except well, for the so, people who are telling you that uh, it's a wonderful life, isn't a Christmas yeah, movie? That's that, that, that's, that's a bad rule. Yeah, yeah. That, we need to pass rule. a we need to pass a law or something. You know, we got serious yeah. problem here. But uh, you know, there's just lots of things that are Christmas traditions that really don't have anything to do with Christmas no. at all. It's just it's just something happened and it just stuck like that. You know, people like Jingle Bells is like one of the all time classic Christmas songs, and it is right nothing zero to do references. With christmas zero you know references. snow is the closest you get to christmas you um know. yeah there's uh there's uh, so many things about foods that you realize like why why this food gingerbread 
The reason uh-huh. why it's around Christmas time is because there were spice restrictions way back in the day. And the government eased up, the German government eased up on when you were allowed to use ginger and make gingerbread. Like there are only certain people that could use it. And then they opened it up at Christmas and Easter time. But it eventually just kind of became a Christmas thing. But right. wh- why why do, why do we have gingerbread at Christmas? Like that's not a, a reason. There's not, it has no nothing to do with the backstory of Christmas. It's because there was some random uh, rule for a while. Yeah. Yeah, just so, some kind of yeah, some kind of law or or something or just you know yeah. just something just you know you know you have you know like in Spain they have the the, the witch and and stuff at Christmas and yeah. it's just just it it is all a interesting interesting history and and I really you can really blow people's mind when you say you know if you really research Christmas back it, it's it's older than the nativity you know it oh, gets yeah. so, so some of its roots from before the nativity and, and a lot of people that just is like mind-blowing to them to, to think that in, in your research of all these topics is there one thing that you learned that you didn't know that just really just kind of i don't know I, hit I, you a little harder than anything else well i i i've been asked this question before and the thing i i keep coming back to is what you just said about about um, how the nativity, I mean, I, I grew up uh, going to church and hearing that, that the, the whole birth of Christ story, and then just accepting that trees and ornaments were part of the deal, but not really hearing about it in church. Right. And then, you know, and I, I, I don't, I just, I don't think I asked myself the question of like, well, why are there trees and why are there things hung in the trees? And like you said, like, I mean, hundreds and hundreds of years before the nativity um, in Northern Europe, they're celebrating and, and it's all about the solstice and it's about um, uh, offering something to Odin's they hang in the, they're hanging fruits and carvings in the tree, which, you know, essentially ornaments. Mm -hmm. But what, what blew me away is also yes there there could be some travelers that go from one area to the other but for the most part saturnalia took place not in the exact same timeline for everything but they were doing some of the same things around the solstice in in southern europe Mm -hmm. um and and then somehow it all just got absorbed into christmas but it's just it was interesting that these things were around for you know, hundreds of years before the nativity and uh, different societies were celebrating in, in a lot of the same ways with right. gift giving and, and um, getting together with family and singing and, and sharing food and, and like the things that we just assume are part of Christmas were going on way before in different areas. And it just all kind of merged into one. Yeah. Um, and the story of America, to me, it, the way Americans celebrate Christmas, like the general idea, it's pretty cool to me that much like America, all right, we take we take uh, Santa Claus from D- Dutch culture, but we take Christmas trees from German culture. And like, mm-hmm. just like America, we just kind of borrowed from different cultures and our, our, our Christmases are just like our society. It's just a... Mm-hmm everybody's got different roots and every tradition has a different root. Yeah. You know, I'm glad you brought up the Americas because when people, you know, want to talk like Christmas history and things, I was like, I always point them. I said, just look to like the, the founding of America and the colonies and, and look how different Christmas was up and down the East coast, you know, you know, from the, you know, you know Puritans that didn't celebrate it at all where it was banned, you know, yeah. and, and, and things like that. And, and then, you know, the Dutch and the Germans coming over and, and bringing different traditions and how widely different it was. And then I, you know, get to Santa Claus and it's like, you know, you know, not, you know, it was the night before Christmas, Santa was a little jolly elf and now he's, you know, a full grown right. human man. You know, it's like, where did that come from? And, you know, it's like the, the only signs we have is like Coca-Cola's marketing campaign with Santa Claus. You yeah, know? <laughs> I know. So Santa Claus, I mean, the the main the main thing that I read was um, Thomas Nass, the famous political yeah. cartoonist. He He's the one who came up with 
the the blueprint for the Santa that Coca Cola used and yeah. fleshed out. Um, but uh, but it was interesting. Like the same guy that came up with the uh, donkey and elephant for the uh, political parties, right? Uh, the, is the guy who came up with their idea of Santa and right. And if you really examine Twice the Night Before Christmas, that's not this. That's that's a that's a little guy like bouncing around yeah. smoking a pipe and yeah. yeah it's it's totally different I, I i did have a lady on a few months back uh her name escapes me now and uh you know she she was from england and we were talking about the same thing about santa claus and she's like well you know when coca-cola did that they borrowed father christmas from us to, to get that and i don't know if they did or didn't I, but she made a lot of sense with that and, and uh you know it's like that that's one thing I, I need to look into a little bit more is you know the tie the 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 influence of father christmas on on the american santa claus and, and uh, right. but there's just so many mo- I would, pieces yeah i mean there are so many pieces and right uh-huh. there's different layers but yeah. i you know i would say the big one is is sinterklaas you yeah. know saint nicholas and and yeah. how that that started, but it, they're clearly the way it was celebrated in America. The, the big thing was, um, was the Dutch in New York city. Right. That's where it like really took off. But you know, the whole aspect of Germans without question were responsible for the, the explosion of Christmas trees, mm-hmm. but it didn't really get super popular until, um, the the royal family in england was right. featured with so it's like we're, we even a german tradition we celebrated because it was the british royal family that had german roots and uh-huh. it's just that's to me it's 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 a real um it's it's a real snapshot in how america is we we have yeah. little things that we don't even realize where it came from but we 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 embrace it all yeah you know i'm starting to see some of that trend um now where you, you 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 pull things um i know this might be a little off topic from your book but where you pull things from other cultures because uh a, a lot of uh hispanic uh friends of mine and uh they have like tradition traditional uh mexican mexican family and um traditions around christmas one of the big things they like to do is uh, uh around the holidays is make a whole bunch of tamales you know, and the whole family gets together and they make a whole bunch of tamales, which uh, I am not complaining at all because yeah. you who's, know, who's and, turning that down. Yeah. And, but I've noticed that, um, some friends of mine that, that heritage isn't, you know, uh, Hispanic or Mexican or whatever are starting to do the same thing because they just love tamales, you know? And, sure. and so it's like, we're off, let's make some tamales ourselves. And, and so I kind of see those kind of, you know, Tamales have nothing to do with Christmas, but I, I, I'm kind of starting to see that at least in, in my little corner of the world, you know, that, that kind of, uh, bleed through from, from different cultures and different traditions and into others that, you know, just kind of take it and adopt it because they like it, you know, and, uh, and it's really interesting. Yeah. yeah when I grew up, my, my, I don't know why, but what my dad would put out, uh, luminaries. Yeah. Um, and that is a central and South American tradition that that I mean, that's where it really uh, took off. And for some reason, in the middle of New Jersey, my dad that has no uh, Spanish roots of, of any kind, um, he you know, he was putting those out in front of our house. And we had uh, Christmas crackers where you pull yeah. the thing apart and snap and like that's a British thing. Yeah. And, you know, we're not British either. So, yeah, it's. You don't, you don't even realize where some of these things come from, but that that's, that's one of the great things about the holiday that there's yeah. different layers added each year. Yep. Well, Ed, you obviously are a, a, a monster Christmas fan. You are, you wouldn't have taken all the time and care it took to put the <laughs> Christmas book together. What? Take us, take us around your family around the holidays. What, what's some of traditions that uh, you you touched on a few there with your dad? What's some other traditions and and things that you guys have that that may be a little unique to to you or that you enjoy the most? Well, my specific my my nuclear family, uh, my I have two boys. Um, one of them was born on Christmas Eve, 
so my Christmas Eve has been uh, kind of a different uh, celebration that I was always used to because we don't we don't want him to be shortchanged at Christmas. So he, right. I mean, shortchanged on his birthday, right? And and so we kind of divide it. Well, we'll do some stuff on the twenty third, but then in the morning we try to find something that's not Christmas related, uh -huh. um, just just so he has something that's birthday then we'll go to lunch and then we come home and then it's christmas eve oh yeah um but we go bowling every every uh christmas eve morning like 11 in the yeah. morning on christmas eve we go bowling which yeah. is, is a real weird thing but there's not too <laughs> many there's not too many things you can pick that aren't christmasy on december 24th yeah so that's yeah. so my kids might grow up thinking oh yeah, you go bowling on Christmas Eve, right? That's what you do, but yeah. it's it's really a birthday related thing. Oh, but man. you know, I I did the, I I always had a very um, my it, it was my grandparents, and now um, you know, my my parents, and we we go to my sisters, but it's it's always lots of music, lots of food, too much food, mm -hmm. and just just kind of a a free for all. There's never it's 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 always pretty lively. My from my childhood to present day of, of celebrating at, at, uh, at family's house. And, uh, it's been great, but that's our Christmas day, but Christmas Eve, we kind of try to dedicate to my son. And, and then at night we just do like Christmas Eve dinner. Wow. That's great. That's great. That's, that's, that's hilarious going bowling. I don't know why it hit me funny, but hit bowling on Christmas Eve, but I, but the lanes yeah, are wide I open. I, <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of room. Yeah. You know, we're, we got the place to ourselves. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. It's not. It's not yeah. that I've. I'm. I'm uh, some champion bowler. Like I yeah. bowl once a year, and it's yeah. Christmas Eve. Well, maybe maybe you should try some of that two-handed bowling. You know, <laughs> maybe. You know, <laughs> my my son is ready to get the guardrails off and i was thinking you know it would be great if i could get the guardrails on for my my time oh my. i just i'm just too ashamed to ask um, for it i'm terrible I, I mean it sounds like if we bowled against each other it would be a race to the bottom because uh, <laughs> that's right uh, uh, i get to the point where i just want to see if i can roll the ball slow enough to where it stops when it hits the first pin yeah, the pin knocks it over <laughs> yeah you know, so. <laughs> That, yeah, that, first one to thirty wins with with right. the two of us. <laughs> well, we'd be going for a month or better if if it was up to me. I just, I just can't. I don't see how those guys do it. You know, where they no. just like barely yeah, creeps spins. on the edge and then just. No. And I try to spin it, and all that means is it's going to the gutter earlier yeah. than later. Yeah, well, I got these fat sausage fingers, and it just does not work <laughs> out. You know, so yeah, but but you know. I live close to St. Louis. We have the bowling hall of fame up in St. Louis. And, uh, I've, I've been, been there. I've been once. Yeah. Just to I say I've been the same thing. I, you know, <laughs> I don't, I didn't know the names of who I was checking out, no. but, uh, I, I went through St. Louis once and I, I went up in the arch and, uh, -huh. uh and I went to the bowling, uh, hall of fame. Well, how long ago was that? Many years ago. Many years. Uh, well, we, 20 we to being a being a sports fan you need to come back and catch the new bush stadium well it's not new anymore but the, the bush it'll be stadium. new to me yeah, yeah it is no i definitely would like to uh, i've uh i've brought i took many people to bush stadium catch cardinals game and not and i had several comments of people saying this is the best place to watch a baseball game it is a great atmosphere you know uh, all around the stadium and inside the stadium was just you know it's not a bad seat in the house and it's just a lot of fun but yeah, I'd love to go back there. Yeah, but uh, man, everybody, I just encourage you to to go out and pick up the Christmas book. Um, it it definitely is the ultimate guide. There's just so much in there. I could have Ed on for many many episodes, and we wouldn't touch it all. How he got it all crammed into a book, I'll never know. But it <laughs> is it is just delightful. It's one of these books, I, and I have a few of them that are part of my Christmas. I call them part of my Christmas decorations because what I do is I I take them upstairs after we're decorated and I'll leave, you know, one on one end table, one on the other, maybe, you know, one on the counter in the kitchen. And then when they have a party and guests over, they, they pick them up and they can thumb through them because, you know, it's not a novel or anything. And, and you could just read a paragraph or two. And, and before you know it, there's a couple of people around. Hey, did you know this? Did you know that? <laughs> and, and things. And it's just kind of one of those. And it's just, just well done, Ed. I just really enjoy this book. There will be a link uh, to the book. Uh, on Amazon in the show notes and description. And uh, if they want to follow you on social media, Ed, where, where can they hunt you down at? Uh, it's 
E Z E D D A L Y. So easy mm-hmm. at daily, but just E the letter E the letter Z E D D A L Y. Right. And uh, there's easy at daily.com is probably the easiest thing. And then I'll point you to everything else. All right. I'll have all those links in the show notes as well. That way people are just a uh, tap, tap away and they can follow you and see what else uh, you're up to. You have any plans of writing any kind of ultimate guides for anything else or <laughs> um, you're going to take a rest after this Christmas one? You know what? I, I, uh, I kind of want to figure out a way to um, when I was when I was doing this project, you stumble across non Christmas movies that you're like, oh, I'd like to I'd like to, you know, dive into a little bit more on that movie. So probably something to do with movies. Okay. Um, but but right now I'm just uh, I'm in full Christmas mode 20, oh, yeah. 20, 21 for me. And it it's been good because, you know, the previous couple of years had been pretty heavy for just society in general and so right. i mean i've been you you do you do this year round and and this is new to me that i did i'm learning about this this uh warm community of christmas enthusiasts all over but but uh this 2021 for me was a year of just consuming non-stop christmas like all the time writing about it editing it re- rewriting it and it, when you do that, you just constantly have thoughts of Christmas movies and songs in your head constantly. So it's been yeah. it's been a different kind of year for me, but a very a very um, light and um, uh, it, very fulfilling year for me. Yeah, it does it. You know, since starting the podcast twenty nineteen, you know, being purposely consuming Christmas things year round, it does it does something to you in a good way. It does make uh, it gives a little hope. You know, just. Uh, having that joy and that Christmas can bring, but uh, man, I really appreciate you uh, jumping on here with me. And like I said, everybody go pick up a a Christmas book and uh, everybody uh, in the comments, let me know below um, and let Ed know what some of your uh, Christmas adjacent movies that uh, you enjoy the best, but maybe aren't, you know, uh, just you know extreme christmas movies if it's you know if it's lethal weapon or if it's uh uh the long kiss good night or if it's uh, la confidential uh just uh let us know in the in the comments below on youtube if you're listening on the podcast hunt the youtube video down leave your comments there and uh random commenter will be chosen and they will rent a copy of the christmas book so oh uh, cool yeah, so make sure uh, you leave those comments, and it'll be about a week after this airs that I will draw the winner and get in touch with them. So, Th- thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. This was this was a lot of fun. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. And if I don't talk to you between now and then, you have a merry Christmas. Same to you. All right, Christmas Clatter is a very merry media production, and as always, keep Christmas hope alive every day. <laughs>